it's pumpkin time, and wait until you see what we are making today, a creamy pumpkin fondue. Cooking instructor Heidi Lang is back with a recipe that is simple, elegant, and inexpensive to make. Hello, Heidi. How are you? I'm great. I love this idea. I do um, too. Let's talk about some of the ingredients. Yes, yeah, so we are starting with a pumpkin. Um, we want to use a sugar pumpkin, or it's known as sugar pie pumpkins, or Cinderella pumpkins, which are really huge. And if you use those, they're about six pounds, then you're going to be doubling the recipe. I didn't realize there were different varieties of yeah, pumpkins. Yeah, if you use a jack o' lantern pumpkin, which you certainly could, mm -hmm. it's going to be kind of watery and stringy. They are really not meant for baking. So okay. if you make your own puree, uh, for a pumpkin pie or whatever. You want to use those small ones like this or, or a little bigger or you can buy often at the farms when you're apple picking these wonderful, they're called Cinderella pumpkins because they look like a carriage from uh, oh, Cinderella. I see. Yeah, they're beautiful. And we're actually serving the fondue in the pumpkin. We I are. love this. This is what we call uh, one-stop shopping, okay. which I always love. Sure. Uh, because you, you throw everything in the bowl and then you throw everything in the, in the uh, pumpkin and you throw it in the oven and an hour later you have you know, a, wonder, a wonderful, wonderful appetizer. Or you could also use it uh, on Thanksgiving table, sure. put two small ones on each end and using it as a side dish. I like so it. So here we go. We're going to start with bacon, which um, miracle of a miracle, this is already done. Okay. And it's, it's an apple sizzling. bacon you said too, It's right? an apple smoked bacon. You can use any kind you like, but this of course, um, you can smell how fragrant yes, that is. Fantastic. It just smells fragrant. So Teresa, if you want to just take this out of here. Sure, I can handle that. Uh, okay. Give me a chance and, to do. Um, uh, and if, if there's still a little grease in it, that's okay because we've got a, we, we have a paper drain, towel okay. to drain it. And then we're going to take the thing I love about recipes that use uh, ingredients that you would throw out are always the best. So we want stale bread. We don't want bread. You want to just tip that, and let me help you with that. Because um, I just good realized with grease, I, just, Heidi. <laughs> I just realized that um, that that could get very messy that's with a okay. uh, spatula. Okay, You're how about the pro that? around here. There we we'll go. We'll leave it to you. Okay. So we're using day old bread. That's so we're using day old here, bread. Huh? Really great, nice French bread from yesterday. Um, so instead of throwing it away, always use it for breadcrumbs or something like that. So why don't we put that in here? Sure, I'll help. And this is what I was saying. Now, we, we don't have to use Ooh, cranberries, I like but this. it adds some color. And we, going yes, in? it's going right. in there too. Um, you could also use pomegranate seeds, which are now. Um, you can buy them already uh, extracted from the pomegranate, so you don't, you don't have to it. go that's through good. it, and that's really good. <laughs> Anything with color, any kind of dried um, apricots or any kind of fruit you could put in there. Um, and then we're going to put some cheese. Well, this will be the fondue part this of it, right? This is the fondue part. What type right, of cheese exactly. are you using? Um, we're using Gruyere today, but we could use any kind of Swiss cheese, any meltable cheese you like. I bet you could even use goat cheese if you wanted to. Um, you just want to make sure it can melt so that it, all this goodness gets kind of mixed in. Okay. So let's throw this that is going in. Right into? Yep. And then we can use either shallots or scallions or chives, anything you like. So I'm using um, uh, scallions today because I like the color of them and sure. I like the flavor. So let's throw those in. And then just for a little zing. Okay, I like um, zing. I, um, almost every recipe I think is worth really wor really worthy has some garlic sure. in it. Sure. Even, even pastry should have some garlic in it. I want to say. <laughs> uh, so we throw in some garlic. And um, and then any uh, herb you have in your garden will work, or anything you want to buy. We still have lots of rosemary, Ooh, so we're going to throw rosemary in. Sure. And I cho just chop that up. Make sure you don't chop that up uh, until you're ready to put it in, because it will get uh, kind of black. Okay. Uh, everything else you can make. Um, when I before uh, today, I actually prepared this last night. I put all the ingredients in separate baggies. Oh. Oh, and, so it's easy. Um, just throw so it all together then. In. Because you know, sometimes the day you're entertaining is not the day you want to you want to start be chopping everything. So That's let's mix that true. together. Okay. And then here's our little guy. Now these guys are a little bit smaller than I would like, but um, whenever you cook, you have to go with what you can find. Okay. Uh, so today, uh, yesterday, uh, these are about two and a half pounds. We would like one that maybe is three, three and a half pounds, or again, as I said, the Cinderellas. They're a much lighter orange color. Okay. You would double the recipe. And you okay. kind of you carved it out. I carved it out. Um, it's like you're making a jack. Yeah, I, I guess. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that okay. uh, after we fill this. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. So we're going to just whoopsies. We're going to throw this we're in. All the in, ingredients right putting, in there. Yeah. Make sure you get the guts on the bottom because all the fun stuff gets. Goes, <laughs> oh, and we've got. We have to add the bacon. You don't want to leave the bacon out. Now, for your vegetarian uh, um, 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 audience. Uh, we you obviously don't need the bacon. You don't then. have to put the bacon in, and you might want to caramelize some shallots, meaning you let them slow uh, cook for about a half hour. Um, that will also give it the nice color that we want and also the flavor. Okay, right. so now we've got the bacon. In about 30 seconds. Okay. You have the oven um, preheated. We have the oven preheated, and then what we're going to do once this is full, 
we're going to add cream, okay? So I'm going to fill this in up a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm going to add some cream until the top. Now, we, I say in the recipe, which will be online, make sure it's not swimming. We don't want this swimming, okay? We want it all to be absorbed, uh, we right? We want it all to be absorbed. On? Okay. And then we're just going to put the cap on. And I this, love that. Yeah, and as Teresa said, if you when you're cutting it, just pretend you're making a jack-o'-lantern okay. and scoop it out the same way and then fill it up. I can't wait to try this. How long does this cook for now? This cooks for about an hour, depending on the size, 60 to 90 minutes. The larger pumpkins obviously are going to cook longer. Sure. Heidi, this is such Voila. a great recipe. I love it. Thank you. And of course, it'll be over on WTNH.com.